Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, as always, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth Broadcast. Now, this broadcast is a live Bible question and answer program where you, the radio audience, at any point in time, opportunities afforded to you to pick up your phone, dial the number 281-837-2222, 281-837-2222, if you have any Bible questions, comments you'd like to make, and we'll give you book, chapter, and verse for all your Bible questions, and we'd like to listen to your, your comments as well. The Gospel of Mark chapter 16. In a few moments, I'm going to read verse number 14 through verse number 16. As we're going to deal with a subject, and this is not in the form of a question, this is actually a commandment that needs to be understood. And that subject matter is, it matters who baptizes you. Man. It matters who baptizes you. Now, we'll read some scripture from the Gospel of Mark, uh, words of Jesus after his death, burial, and resurrection. Well, the Bible reads, afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth, that's the faith, and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Now I read Mark 14, uh, excuse me, 16, verses 14 through verse number 16. Now I want to hone in just for a few moments before I get to the crux of this, uh, this subject matter. Notice what Jesus said in verse 16. He that believeth, that's the faith. Whoever believes in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, notice he didn't say you're saved at that point. He says, and is baptized, shall be saved. Because Jesus understands that if a person's going to be saved, they must hear the gospel and be obedient to the gospel by being baptized in water where one will receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That takes place in the water. Now, you have some who would argue the latter part of verse 16, but he that believeth not shall be damned. They argue where well, it doesn't say he that believeth and is baptized not shall be damned. It just says he that believeth not shall be damned. Because if you don't believe the gospel and all the details of the gospel, what Jesus understands is you're not going to get baptized. Right. If you don't believe that Jesus died, buried, and rose from the grave, you will not obey his commandment to get baptized. So therefore, he doesn't have to say, he that believeth and is baptized not shall be damned. Because if you don't have the faith, then you won't get baptized. That's right. Now, I hope that that's cleared up. Now, when we talk about baptism... I want you to understand, we need to understand what baptism is. Baptism, and the Greek word is baptizo. It's an immersion that happens in water. But it is not, it is not the water that saves an individual. Amen. In the water, there is a spiritual act that takes place by the hands of Jesus when one gets in the water. Colossians, go over to Colossians. I'm going to read some words from the Apostle Paul in the book of Colossians chapter 2. And I want to read verse number 11 and verse number 12 so that you and I can understand when you talk about baptism, it's more than what meets the eye. It's more happening than what you and I see in the natural. There is a spiritual act that has taken place when an individual gets into the watery grave of baptism, a circumcision that takes place by the hand of Jesus in the watery grave of baptism. We do the physical act here on earth, but there is a spiritual act that is taken place in heaven by the Lord. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 11, Paul writing to Christians reminding them and understanding that's who the Bible is written to, the New Testament is written to those who are, are Christians. That's who the Bible is written to. And he says, in whom also you, as I'm in Colossians 2, 11, you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Now, by the time Paul writes to the saints in Colossae, Christ has been in the heaven already. Acts chapter 2, the kingdom has already come down from heaven already. But he tells these Christians in Colossae that they were already circumcised. That's what he tells them. And their circumcision was one that was made without hands. Now, when did that happen? Look at verse 12. He explains it. Buried with him in baptism. Wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who had raised him from the dead. Do you Amen. see that? Amen. So there is a spiritual act 
that takes place when an individual hears the gospel, believes it, repents, confess Jesus as Lord, and they get baptized in water. Jesus, who is in heaven, does a circumcision of cutting the sins out of your heart, and he gives you the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and that happens in the water. Now, I hope you, I hope you got that in your spirit. Now, that being said, you should by now understand that baptism is a spiritual work. Amen. Make sure you get that. It is a spiritual work. And the Lord never, never uses the world, never uses those who don't have the spirit to do any spiritual work. Amen. Because they are dead themselves. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. See, brothers and sisters, I want to make sure we understand this who are members of the Church of Christ. It saddens me we got the we got the clean house among saints, leaders of men who have crept in and are telling saints that it doesn't matter who baptizes you. That it doesn't matter who baptizes you. It only matters what you believed when you got baptized. And there is not a scripture that they can call, 281-837-2222, that they can call in to prove that point. That's right. If you understand that it's a spiritual work, you and I have to understand that the Lord doesn't use anyone other than those who have the Spirit to do spiritual work. Now, Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul will prove that. In 2 Corinthians 6, in verse number 14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? And what concord have Christ with Belial? Or what part have he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple. Who? The Christians. Or you are the temple of the living God. As God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Do you see that? This context is not dealing with marriage. This context That's is right. dealing with being in agreement with spiritual work. The Baptist can't fellowship with the Church of Christ. The Catholic Church and the Church of Christ do not fellowship together. That's they right. teach different doctrines. They, they did not teach or believe what the Bible, what the apostles taught about how one receives the Spirit of God. Yeah. Simply by the name itself lets you know that there is no spiritual fellowship. Amen. Baptism is a spiritual work. It is a work that God commands. It's a work that Jesus is involved with. When one hears the gospel and believes it, repents, and gets baptized, Jesus gives you the indwelling of the Spirit, and that happens in the water. Baptism is where your sins are washed away. Go to Acts 22 and 16. Acts chapter 22 and 16. It's where the Lord washes away your, your sins, just like the Apostle Paul. There was a man that was sent to the Apostle Paul, a man who was a Christian already, who was sent to the Apostle Paul. While the Apostle Paul was on his knees, he was praying for three days. The Lord sends a man to him who has the spirit to tell Paul, who's not a Christian yet, what he needs to do in order to become a Christian. Amen. And the Bible says in Acts 22 and 16, this is Paul giving his own account. And now why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized. Why? And wash away your sins calling on the name of the Lord. When a person hears the gospel of Jesus Christ that is taught by the man who he sent with the Spirit of God, they will hear it, and what they'll do is they'll get in the water, and when you're getting in the water, you're calling on God who is in heaven to cut the sins out of your heart, and that happens at the point of baptism. Now, for those of you who don't believe baptism saves, turn to 1 Peter 3 and verse number 20. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 20. Again, we understand, we're not saying the water saved, but the Bible speaks of one baptism. That's what it speaks of. One baptism. That's all there is. Either you were taught right and baptized by the right person, or you're still lost. Understand that. Either you were taught right by the man of God 
the Christian that God sent and baptized by a Christian male, or I'm saying this with all the love in my heart, you are still lost. Now, for those that advocate that baptism doesn't save, I want you to look here and listen here what Peter says about baptism in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 21. He says, the like figure, whereunto even baptism does also now save us. You see that? It does also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You have men that say it doesn't save. Men that say it's just an outward sign for an inward grace. The Lord says on the pages of inspiration that baptism saves. Amen. It is a spiritual work given by God. And those who has the spirit, a male, is the only one who baptized, able to baptize. Go to Romans 8 and 9. Because if you don't have the Spirit of God, you're none of His. Romans 8 and 9. While you turn to Romans 8 and 9, this is to these leaders uh, in the Church of Christ who are running around with this lie, these, these tracts, the Gospel Way articles, talking about it doesn't matter who baptizes you. Let me tell you something, brothers. Y'all better fix it. We're going to clean up we're going to clean up these idols that you all have brought into the church of Christ and tear it down just like Jeroboam tore down those images we read about in 2 Chronicles 34. Amen. You brothers have put up high places and groves and images that are not of the Lord. You claim that you know hermeneutics, a direct command, approved example, necessary inference. Well, you show me in any of those three of the hermeneutics that you go to school to study where anybody but a male member who has God's spirit is doing the baptizing. 281-837-2222. And while I'm in this neighborhood, what I want every brother and sister to do on this on this radio uh, station uh, call, I want, and listen to me very well, and if you're listening on YouTube, listen to me very well. You make sure you go to your various congregations and you talk to those brothers and sisters who have placed membership uh, at your congregation based upon telling you they were baptized somewhere else. Ask them who baptized them. What church were they baptized at? Because many of us have people that are sitting in our buildings who have been accepted by these weak-kneed preachers, elders, and deacons in the church just because they were told it doesn't matter who baptized you and you accepted them in the number. Amen. These people are still lost is what they are. And every child of God, every Christian, need to be doing the work and cleaning up house Amen. and get rid of this foolishness that's being taught in the church of Christ. In Romans 8 and verse number 9, if you don't have God's spirit, the Baptist could not baptize you. That's ridiculous to say it doesn't matter who baptized you. Ridiculous. Go next door and have my atheist neighbor to baptize me? That's ridiculous. Amen. It doesn't make sense. they got to have God's spirit. In Romans 8 and verse number 9, Romans 8 and verse number 9, Paul says this, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, listen to what the Bible says. Don't worry about me raising my voice. Listen to what the Bible says. He is none of his. Do you see that? Amen. If you don't have the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And there's only one way to receive the spirit of Christ. One way that the Bible speaks of for a spiritual birth to be uh, transpired. And that is through a, hearing the gospel and a male member, not even a Christian sister can baptize you. A male member of the church must baptize you in order to receive the indwelling of the spirit. And if you follow any other pattern than that, I don't care how loving you are, how many years you've been sitting in a Church of Christ building, you need to understand something right now. This is God's grace to you. You need to be baptized by a male member of the Lord's Church or you are lost. That's what you are. Man. Now, every example that we see in the Bible is a male member of the church. Not even a Christian woman can baptize. Isn't that interesting? Now, we know they have the spirit. We got some strong sisters in the church. But one thing the sisters know, there is no approved example of a woman baptizing anybody. God has chosen that a male is the image that is seen 
to bring about a spiritual birth into this world. A woman brings about the physical birth. That's the image. They bring the physical. The male with the spirit brings the spiritual. Amen. These guys are lost their mind in the church of Christ. Don't matter who baptized. No, can I baptize myself? That's what I want to know. How can I? Can, you ever seen the dead bury the dead? That's why I can't even baptize myself. That's right. The dead cannot bury the dead. And so you have to understand that. It's more than an individual just saying the right words that qualifies a baptism. Go to Acts 19. Go to Acts chapter 19. You brothers, I'm telling you, you better fix it. These schools are killing us. Amen. These schools are killing us. This is why you know, they, they, the world is calling us Campbell Light. If Alexander Campbell, if the things that are written by him and Bartstone are true in the writings and the internet, let me tell you something. He was lost. That's what he is. That's right. That's what he was. He died lost. The Lord has never left the kingdom to another man once it was established. That's right. He is lost. And anybody who's been baptized by anybody other than a male member of the church, I don't care how religious you think you are, I'm here to tell you you're lost. Now, in Acts chapter 19, Acts chapter 19, verse 13, what I want you to see here is more than just words that a person says. You've got to have the power of the Spirit to do spiritual work. Yeah. In Acts 19, 13, then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them the call over them which had evil spirits in the name of our Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. Let me stop right there. Notice what these guys are saying. They're not preaching about Buddha. Uh, they're talking about the Jesus who Paul preached. That's coming out of their mouth. They're talking about the same Jesus Paul preaches, the one that died on the cross, that was buried on the third day, uh, and he rose from the grave. That's what they're doing in the Baptist church. That's what they do in the church of God in Christ. They're not, we're not saying they're talking about Buddha, but what we are saying is they're preaching another doctrine about what Jesus and the apostles taught when they preach uh, that you don't have to be baptized to be saved. That's another Jesus. That's another doctrine. That's what they're doing. That's right. And so these men have a, a knowledge of Paul's Jesus. And so notice what they do. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? You know, the, whole, this, the evil spirit have no problem with you all playing church. Let me show you get that. They have no problem with you playing church. Fake Christians. Just because you got a Bible, hopping around buildings and jumping and hopping the musical instrument. They want, who are you? They're not scared of you. This is why many of you in these denominated churches, primarily the Baptist Church of God in Christ, you got these, these gays that's playing the pianos and, and, and the harps and the instruments, and all you do is talk about them. You know why that's what you do? Because you can't help them. That's right. You can't help them cast out the evil spirits because you're dead yourself. Amen. Many of you in them churches, you're sleeping with them yourself. You're nasty too. Amen. You're nasty. Amen. That's what you are. That's why you can't fix them. This is why Jamal Bryant can't help nobody. He's nasty too. Amen. Now, in verse 16, and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overcame them, and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Notice something. They, they, they said the right word. No, they said they just said what Paul said. That's all they said. And guess what happened to them? Because they don't have God's spirit, they cannot do spiritual work. Do you understand that? They cannot do spiritual work. And so it matters who baptizes you. It's more than just saying the right thing. The message and the baptism must come from the right man. Go to Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17. Now, forgive me, verse 14. Now, the Bible says, How then shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? How shall they believe in him in whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Did y'all see that? God will send the right man, the right message, put him in the right place for those who are seeking God so that an individual can have the spiritual birth that is necessary so that they might be saved. And you need to make sure you understand that. The Bible only speaks of one baptism. Please understand that. Either you are taught right and baptized right by the right man or you're lost. That's it. 
There is no in between. I don't care how good you think you are. See, I, I hear, I listen to the radio too. All this foolishness that you all believe in, talking about being baptized in the Jordan River, the Nile River, all that's a bunch of foolishness, what that is. Go to Jerusalem. Yeah, you can go and all that, but getting in the water, you can get in the water all you want. But let me tell you something, just getting in the Jordan River or the Nile River and all that does not save you. Amen. You need to be baptized by a male member of the church of Christ where Jesus gives you his spirit. And therefore, when you understand, you can get baptized in the muddy waters in Haiti if you have the right man with the right message to plunge you in some water. And then Jesus, while you're in the water, will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Not worried about people calling about my anger because I am so upset I can eat nails behind the foolishness that's going on in the church of Christ. And I understand why the world is doing it. But you brothers and sisters, we need to wake up in the church. Amen. You allow these men to come in. Go to John chapter 2. Hold on the line, caller. Give me a few minutes. Go to John chapter 2. Let me tell you something. Jesus got tired of the foolishness, and, and so do I, and, and other brothers who love the Lord, and so did Josiah when I go back to the Old Testament. Josiah's daddy was a, a nut. His grandfather, Manasseh, was a nut. His sons after him, his four boys, were spiritual nuts. But Josiah handled business. That's what he did. Amen. He cleansed house. He got people back where they needed to be, regardless of his daddy and his granddaddy. His granddaddy finally got it right at the end of his life, but he spent 54 of them 55 years tearing up the nation. Amen. That's what he did. And we got a bunch of you today tearing up the church of Christ. In John chapter 2 and verse 13, the Bible says the Jews' Passover was at hand. Jesus went up to <laughs> Jerusalem. And found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changes of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes money and overthrew the tables and said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence. And that's what I'm telling you. Take this stuff out of the church. Amen. And make not my father's house a house of merchandise. So you brothers are worried about your numbers on the roll, having a warm body in the pews to preach to, worried about the treasury and the collection plate more than you are souls. And we got to repent of that. You're making the father's house a house of merchandise. And we got some den, uh, some, some guys who made the church a den of thieves is what you made the church. And we need to repent of it. 281-837-2222 is the number of the call. At this time, I'll turn it over to, uh, we have a call on line. Go ahead, caller, you're on the air. I know for another person's eye when I got a big beam in mind. So you don't think at the Wilson Road Church of Christ, y'all got homosexuality? You don't think y'all... Do we? Hey, do we? Hey, hang up. Do we? I want to know, do we? Hey, 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 hey. Do we? Hey, do you know of any? Okay, cut him off right now. Cut him off right now. Cut him off. Cut him off. Cut him off. Wanna, now, now I want him off. I want him off there. Now, I'm gonna, let me tell you something, uh, Junior. If you better fix your life, buddy. I don't know who it was. Well, I don't care. Okay, who? I don't know if it was one. We don't think we have homosexuals. Just call, call in and point it out. That's what we want you to do. We deal with cases. Do you know of any homosexuals? We don't think nothing. We deal with cases when they present themselves to us. So if you know of any homosexuals, if you know if I'm a homosexual, call in and say you're a homosexual and I've seen you. And we'll deal with that. But don't call in here with what we think. We're, we're reading the Bible and we're reading our answer from the word of God. And one thing I know that the word of God, for those who don't have a heart after God, they get mad about it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. A lot of us, we claim to be re religious and holy. Uh, but then when you hear truth, you hate it. Why? Why? What if they do have homosexual there? We're teaching them. Are we sleeping with them? Are we endorsing it? So don't call in here with what we think. Next time you call, you call with some scriptures out of your mouth. That's what you call. Call with some evidence out of your mouth, not with what you think. This is the wrong program. 281-837-2222. Brother Ozan. Thank you, Henry. God bless you. I concur and affirm and agree with everything you said. I want audience to know that. And I stand out know Brother Frizz and Brother Green as well. And we thank God for our brother having courage to stand up and say what other men have a fear to say. And want to also point out to you uh, as an excellent subject, 
You know, audience, you must learn to draw timelines on when something changes. They're as clear as the sun in the Bible. I'll give an example. You can't explain to me how the Jews have been pushed out of the picture of salvation. You can't. You hear us say these things, and you wonder why we would say Alexander Campbell, neither Bart and Stone are members of the Church of Christ. Never were. They were false doctrine teachers that entered in. See, you've been taught by history that they were members of the Church of Christ, and some of you have been lied to and say they started the Church of Christ. You can't start anything that's already existed since around approximately A.D. 33. So that's what you need to understand and accept. I want to share with you how the Jews are denoted by the Lord as being the keepers of salvation. Look at John chapter 4. Now this is before Christ died, is buried and resurrected. Before the church is sent down, yes, from heaven. John 4, if you will, and now let's look at verse 21. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, thou art coming, when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Why does he answer that? Verse 20. Our Father worshiped in this mountain. Now that's what she says with an S. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men are to worship. She's gone back to the mountain that has been disarmed as a place of worship since Solomon completed the temple. Somehow they're still doing this. She's wrong. So Christ explains that we're not going to the mountain or to Jerusalem at some point. Look at verse 22. Look what he tells her. You worship, you know not what. We know we worship for salvation of the Jews. Now you get angry when Henry, myself, Brother Frias, other gospel preachers, Brother Kevin, tell you that salvation is in the church of Christ. You automatically think a few buildings that you've seen. It's not even in some of those buildings that got the sign church of Christ. The problem is, is Jesus is explaining to her salvation is of the one nation Jews. But look what he says in verse 23. But the hour coming, that isn't little. It doesn't happen in one hour. Why does he use that term? Because it's a metaphor of speech. And now is. So he says it's now because he's putting it in the process. The teaching of it. When the true worshiper shall worship the Father, the Spirit, and the truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God's a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So the Lord is speaking, verse 24, of what we do today in the church of Christ. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is true. If you're not worshiping according to the words of God, you're worshiping incorrect. And that's all we're trying to do is help you. I believe we have a caller on the line. We're going to take that caller right now. Okay. Hello, caller. We've got about a minute left. Can you speak to us? Good job, my brother. This is Brother Kennedy. Good morning, mm -hmm. man. Y'all did an excellent job. Brother old man, you just took the words out of my mouth. I was just getting ready to say that I'll um, thank the Father and our truth. Our word is truth. And, you know, in John chapter 3, uh, Jesus said that unless a person is born of the water and the spirit, he will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So they got to ask themselves a the question. How do I become born of water and of spirit? And you cannot perform the works of the church if you don't have the spirit of God. God bless you, brother. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, brother. God bless you. We love you and we appreciate you so. And audience, I hope that you heard and we got a few seconds left. I hope you heard and understood. I want to go right to that scripture you used to John 3. Now, how do you explain this? Nicodemus is a master of Israel. He is a teacher. He's on the Sanhedrin court. He's a Pharisee involved with those group of individuals. He's involved with that group of individuals where they respect him highly. And he's a ruler. The difference is, is this man, as he's involved with the sun engine, interacting and working with those guys who sit on that seat, he is going to be told by Jesus that you have to be born again. Look at John 3, 3 is what our brother just said. Jesus asked and said to him, truly, truly, I said, yes, so the man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Look, you can't see it. You won't be able to comprehend it. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time this most woman be born? Look at Jesus asked in verse 5. Jesus answered, truly, truly, I said to you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Nicodemus is already born, but he must be born of the spirit. Apollos knew the word, but he only knew John's baptism. And the list is endless. Brother Henry showed you in Acts 19 where those men repeated the exact words of Christ. Audience, why will you die 
and not be saved. Don't you know we love you? We gain nothing by you getting baptized. You gain everything, Christ, salvation, the Holy Spirit, and the Father. Can't you see that our only mission is to help you see the scriptures and help you be saved? You give us nothing that can benefit us. You only will save yourself. We've already made a decision. I want to encourage you, encourage you, please remember, faith through faith, repentance, confession, and baptism, you can become a child of God. The Lord will lift you up out of that water grave, put his spirit in you, and add you to the church, and then you can join forces with the righteous all over the world, not just with us. If you have a problem with us, just get baptized and be saved and work with a different group. If you have a problem with us, work with a different number of saints in the church of Christ. We don't gain anything by you working with us, but you will gain salvation and we'll see you in heaven. Amen. But he was faithful saints of God, Romans 16, 16, the church of Christ salute you. It was delivered and loved. I'm so glad you dealt with Junior like yeah. that. God bless you. Because Junior doesn't understand Look, we're not God. We didn't make any human beings. I have worked and talked to homosexuals. I'm not afraid of you all. I want you to know you can call my number, 713-894-2510. I'm not afraid of you calling me. I'm not afraid to eat lunch with you. If you got a dress on, friend, I'm going to sit with you. If you're a guy, if you got on man's clothes, I'm going to sit with you later to tell you about God because your soul is that important. We do not feel you. We're not homophobic. But at the same time, we cannot let you believe your lifestyle will be allowed to enter into him. That's all we're trying to do. Yeah, he mentioned concerning to take the beam out of your eye. He mentioned yeah. homosexuals being uh, Will Clayton, but the idea is that he doesn't have a name. He doesn't have any proof. He's That's just right. throwing out sins and applying them to people, but he doesn't even know the people nor exactly. the sin. So when it comes to us judging, we're repeating the oracles of God concerning the sin of homosexuality. That's right. And he's saying we got a beam in our eye, but he has to judge, as Brother Henry mentioned. Yeah. Okay, who is the person's name? Exactly. What's the per what's the part of the people that have uh, that sin upon them? But again. He doesn't like us to repeat the judgments of God concerning his sin. The Bible Amen. tells us 1 John 4, 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So try the spirits whether they are of God, because there are some spirits, people that are not of God, and they're baptizing in the Baptist Church, Methodist, Presbyterian, that's right. and then they're coming to the Church of Christ, that's right. and they are not of God. Not and of so God. that's why we got to test them. To ask, to ask who, who baptized you, where were you baptized at? That's right. You know, to find out if they are of God. Exactly. You know, what does it say in Timothy concerning the Lord knows those that are His? Brother Henry mentioned Romans eight nine. If you don't have the Spirit of God, you are none of His. You're none of His. And so the idea is that this is how we test. But again, when we repeat the judgments of God in the oracles, you got people like Junior calling in, getting angry because again. We're speaking the truth. Exactly. And as Preach. Paul mentioned, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? That's right. God bless you, Brother Javier. You know, for you all to understand, when he says take the beam, what, Junior, next week, call what, what beam do you know in any of our eyes? Exactly. Call it out on the live program, like Brother Henry said. What beam is in our eyes? See, you're judging us. We didn't say a beam in your eye other than we know it's a beam in your eye now for judging us incorrectly. For your information, I have talked personally to homosexuals, taught them the gospel, and watched them get baptized. Amen. No one is afraid, and no one is making homosexuality the ultimate sin. Henry pulled that sin out of one of many sins, and he's pointing to you out there who are homosexuals to understand those churches can't help you. They'll laugh about you, talk about you while they're eating chicken, but they should be loving you and telling you you can't live like that. Mm -hmm. And they should be an example to show you how you can get out of it. But as Henry said, they can't because they have a beam in their eye, which is other sins. But they think fornication and adultery isn't the same as homosexuality and pedophilia. They're all the same. They're moral sins. This is thievery. But we as the saints of God, we have let the Lord clean us. That's right. He cleaned us. And if he should have to wash us of anything else again, we will. But we love you. We love the community. We have no problem with Montrose and any other area that exists like that. But we're not going to let you walk around and kill yourself because we do love you and we want you to live forever. Amen. God bless you, my brother.